So welcome to the technical demonstration of the iPad uh, for the exercise. So obviously this is one of the um, iPad minis that are prepared from the um, FLS e-learning team for this exercise. So to switch it on you need to press um, the button at the top end that's below the camera here um, and hold it pressed for a couple of seconds and then it will start up so once started up um, you can always just touch the home button to get it going again there we go this one is confused doesn't know which way it wants to be hold turn it around you can do this by swiping this is what I did with this one I just had to swipe it sometimes you can frizzle them around um, none of these applications is what we really want we want iMole view. Yeah, I'm going to use this pen, but you can also use obviously a finger. Uh, actually, it works better with a finger. So we want to use iMole view. If you click on it, it will start up with a default protein. Now this is the last protein I looked at. Yeah, but um, let's start with another one. So you just click on this field. And then you um, type in uh, which of the molecules you want to work on. It will search them in the PDB database straight away, which is the same database that you can use um, to retrieve other sequence information data files. This might come in very handy. Now the sequence we want to look at is called 3ERT. So we go to the number part, 3, go back, ERT. And you see there's not many left. It says here 3ERT, nuclear receptor protein estrogen. That's the one we want. Click on it. And there it is loading. Um, you see this is a uh, biggish molecule. Yeah, you can rotate it with your finger or in my case I rotate it with this. Um, you can zoom in or out by pinching it. Yeah, you can twist it, rotate it. And this is uh, the default settings that we've got here. Um, let's go to the menu, see what we can do here. There's one thing I'd like to change, or two things actually. So we're in the menu, and here you see different options. It's a bit hard sometimes to say which ones are um, clicked on or clicked off. Um, but let's say this one here is clicked on, the one next to it is clicked off. Now I touched it and now you see all the side chains of all the amino acids. Detailed information can be a bit overwhelming, so let's get rid of it again. Menu, we click on it, it's gone. Now we just see the backbone which gives us a better overview really. And we see there's some functional annotations, go back in the menu. Now the annotations are gone. Yeah? So this is the button here for the annotations. We can also label atoms. As you can imagine, there should be quite a few of them here. Um, and that gets more interesting when you get in a detailed side view. These are the atoms of the small molecule, in this case, that are only labeled. Go back in the menu, click on the button again. Labels are gone. Uh, we can label the residues, that might be helpful if you're lost, if you don't know where you are in the protein. Yeah, but there's also another way to label the residues. Let me go back in the menu and get rid of the residues. All you have to do is click on one residue and hold it clicked and then it pops up. Yeah, so this is alanine 505. In this case, so if you don't know where you are in a molecule, click on it, hold it for a couple of seconds, and it shows you where you are. Then here at the bottom, we see a long array of sequence. This is because here this button allows us to open or close the sequence view. So we press on this iMole view button here in the corner, and it opens and closes the sequence view. So the whole sequence of the protein is shown here. You can stroll it along so you know which residues have actually been used. Yeah. Okay, so there's something about this view I don't like too much. It's not very bright. 
Now maybe you're okay with this, let's go on the menu. And this has switched something on that's called fog. I think it's in settings. And here you see the fog. This gives you a three-dimensional idea because items that are in the back of the plane appear darker. I don't like it too much. Let's uh, switch it off and see. Particularly for this movie, it's a lot brighter now because everything has the same brightness. Yeah. Should you end up with a view that you don't know what it is, can't see your object, press this button here and it centers uh, your, your 3D file again in the middle. Now let's open another file. Um, and if you're completely lost and you don't know what you've done, if you pressed on buttons that you don't know really what they are and all of a sudden it all looks very weird or you don't see anything anymore, don't worry. Go here, click on it again and there you are again with the default file. Yeah. So if you're completely lost, just type in the sequence again. There you are. Uh, let's find another one. Three E R D this time. And this looks a bit more complex because what you see here is that several molecules are actually here. Yeah. So this is several molecules that form the crystal. This is one crystal unit. This is how it crystallized. It's crystallized as a dimer, crystallized as a dimer. So when you look now in the sequence view, then you can see uh, that there's loads of little buttons called A, B, B acetylated, B acy, um, A acetylated, C, D acetylation, A des, B des, water. So let's see what happens if you press those buttons. Let's press away all the B buttons. For this you have to press them twice. Everything that starts with a B we press twice. Um, let's get rid of C, D, no not this one, no we didn't want to get rid of this one. So now what you're left with is everything that has just to do with A, which is a single unit. Yeah. So now you can see a single unit, because in some files there's a single protein, single structural units, and whereas in others you have two and that can be confusing. Now if you um, click at the right um, buttons here in the bottom, you can visualize parts of what actually was acquired when they got the crystal information. Yeah. So you can basically um, define the view that you want to have. And it shows you the sequence always so you know what is what. Okay, so now D. What is D? That's a bit strange, isn't it? Look, 695. And it's swimming there. So which residues are we talking about? Let's click on it. So this is residue 697. To residue 687. Yeah, so basically, here's the sequence, there's these residues. And they are connected somehow to the main molecule. We just don't know how, because they weren't structured. They were in a crystal not defined, so they were moving around, so there is no structural data for this. But it is the same sequence, yeah? Which you can find out if you just go to the end of this sequence, yeah, because it ends somewhere, H55. That's where it ends, and it then goes undefined to this other island. Yeah, so that's a bit confusing, but it's another domain of this protein that is defined in the crystal, but in real life may well uh, be not so defined and may move around, which is of course very important for the structure of proteins. Yeah, so I hope you found this helpful. This is a little introduction to what iMoleView can do. And obviously you will be working in pairs and you can change all those settings um, and, and show the hydrogens or um, change different ribbon styles. Some of the views, when it comes to rendering the surface, the little iPads can't do it and it comes with a warning. Now if you ignore this warning and press the button, it will not work out. Yeah, so there's not much to it, but it should help you um, to visualize uh, your molecules. Um, there's another thing I want to show you. If you go to menu, 
um, you can have uh, a rocking style and this is not the main menu but this is the main menu yeah if you go from the main menu back in settings then you can have different rocking styles I chose here Y rotation it can be different ones X rotation it can be X uh, Y rocking or just Y rocking let's uh, press Y rocking um, yeah, set to Y rocking so let's go back to the um, main menu in this case and in the main menu we can now set rocking which is off to on what does this do now it gives you a little bit of a more three-dimensional idea you can also rotate it yeah so it will always be rocking in this which gives you an idea how it looks in three dimensions because don't forget this is just two-dimensional obviously and with movement our brain tries to reconstruct the three-dimensional structure of this see if you find it helpful and this is the end of our little tutorial yeah at the end of it um, just switch them off by pressing this button here on top of the camera for a little while and if you press this for a couple of seconds it will switch itself off enjoy <laughs>